YouTube. My name is Mariam or pronouns are she, her. You may know me as my Romy Crafts on Instagram or my Romy Designs on Etsy. Welcome to my floss tube. This is a channel about cross stitch. Sometimes I talk about other crafts, but today we're going to talk about cross stitch. And also, this is a special episode because it's web parade. Yay! It's that time of the year. Everyone is recording web praise. So I decided to do one. I thought I will have, you know, a dozen webs guess what i have more than that if uh the thumbnail is any indication you already know you're in for a long haul this is only long for me and this is the most webs that i have had um in the history of my stitching uh, i started stitching at the end of 2020 a very end of 2020 and I was monogamous stitcher for the whole of, I think, 2021, I will say. At the end of 2021, I started, like, having two projects at the time. Yeah, I was, I was a baby stitcher. Um, and then in 2022, uh, I decided to just let go of that and just stitch all of the things. So I have since accumulated a few whips, um, have had a lot of finishes um but you know as as a matter of fact this year i have finished 39 projects granted some of them were really tiny but still 39 is a great number however i still have a lot of whips that are lingering from 2022 um until now so um we're going to talk more about what i'm going to do with all of that in the separate um, video that I'm going to record actually after this um, and it's about my plans what I'm going to do in 2024 um, all the regular floss Yubi things and like whip update and all of that today however uh, in this video I'm going to just go over all of my webs which are 21 and then I'm going to give you um, a little bit of information as much as I remember I don't remember when i started majority of them i do know which ones roughly have been started in 2022 so those are the ones that i definitely want to make sure that i focus on uh, more than the ones that i started in 2023 all right so let's get going this is gonna be a long video all right so i'm gonna just pick a bag from the top go through i have a list I'm going to just, I, I try to match the order that it thinks that I have here on the list with the order of things that are in the bag. It doesn't mean that they are newer or older or whatever. So it's, there is no rhyme or reason. It's just the order that the bags are stacked. That's the order. Um, and if I have any inform information on the bag, I'm going to give it, give that information. Majority of my bags though um those are that i handmade or me made so i made them all right let's get going um i'm gonna apologize for the zipper sound because i didn't have time to pre-open all the bags and because i want to make this as easy as possible to future me um i'm gonna try not to edit everything so if sound of zipper is an uh, issue for you, please turn down the volume or I don't know, take your headphone out just for a minute until I open the zipper. All right, here we go. So the first bag is, these are the actual, this is actually a really good uh, suggestion that I can have. These are wet bags that you can buy in a pack of three or four, sometimes five even. Um, these are wet bags for like swimsuit and stuff and these make a great great project bags um, They're relatively re cheap on Amazon um, So and they come in variety of colors and uh, some of them are double zipper So have one main zipper and then the secondary zipper here So when I'm low on bags and I don't feel like making bags I just buy a pack of these and go with that all right, so this one is the um, actually whip that I am currently trying to 
work on and I'm hoping to be able to finish before the end of 2023 uh, because my goal is to hit the 40 finish for the year. So fingers crossed, I can make it. All right, so this is Peppermint Purple Sal. This is black work. It's on 16 count Ada. Um, hand dyed by mislaid pages this doesn't have a name it came in a pack um of several like colorful as usual colorful um fabrics and i'm using one is trend of dmc 820 to um stitch so i have a stitch up until i think second week of august so I have the rest left. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just make a pile and then deal with the mess later. Next, um, so these are another like good option for small project bags. Um, this is from shop miss a is uh, like a dollar store but online kind of situation and they have these bags for 188 i think a dollar 88 for for these bags these are canvas bags um yeah this is simple like one zipper simple bag so this one holds my um, last, uh, I mean, not last, still, 2023's birthday start. It's White Winter Moth by Kathy Barrick. And this was, I actually had, um, like a challenge, um, for my birthday. And, uh, it was Wild Card BD Sal. Um, so, and I asked people to choose um, a fabric or floss that is like a wild card for them, that they don't know what to do with. It's, a, it's, a, it's unusual color. It's a color that, color that they don't know what to do. It's a multicolor or, you know, any combination of, uh, of the above. And then ignore the color palette of the pattern that they chose completely. And then just basically build their palette around that one rogue or like, wild card um color so i did the same thing so this is what i did with mine this is 18 count color and cotton um ada in rose water and then um there is a pastel you don't see it that like it hasn't been used much so these little ones are in that is this is all sulky conversion by the way it's sulky 12, 12 weight and um, the, um, the wall card that I used was this um, pastel um, blendable that ha actually has all these colors that you see in it. So I just chose that and then, then I built my palette around it. And I'm more than halfway done with this. Uh, the biggest, you know, motif was this moth itself, which is done now, so. I'm hoping to um, not to drag this for another year or so definitely um, will be my focus in the first half of the 2024 to finish. Next is this is my lemon to lemonade bag if you have uh, seen my previous uh floss tube you know that uh, that the one that i recorded with um uh the quad city needle minders which is the group of me uh sarah from mount cross julie from julie and it's just 16 and nietzsche from daybreak stitchery we have a group of people we're all from the quad city area and we gather um every month on zoom or in person mostly in zoom we did it once in person um and we talk about different things um like just to stitch together and all of that so we started recording those um and that portion that we record 
moving forward will be a specific topic. So this time we did Lemon to Lemonade, which is bring in a, cha a challenged project. And I made everyone uh, a project bag that has like a lemon theme. And um, you put your project in that and then you start thinking about what you want to do. This is a problem project and you bring it to the table. Everyone, uh, you know, uh, brings you know, try to brainstorm, be, come up with ideas, and then based on that, you decide what to do moving forward. So I brought this project, which is um, the Natural Work Style, but Pixie Pixel Cross Stitch. Um, I don't have the whole thing printed, but it looks like this. When it's done and I have a stitch through May so this is May um, I'm stitching it on 18 count Ada in a light coffee and I'm using a salt key blendable 12 weight in olive tree so my issue was as much as I love stitching on this I ran out of steam and I have not touched it since May so I want to figure out what to do with it and I decided with the team like when we talked to finish um, the coat and then bring up the border and finish it there if there is a motif that I really would like to stitch I will you know add a little bit of space at the bottom and bottom of the coat and I add those motifs in otherwise I just finish it so I'm not going to stitch the whole thing I'm going to just um stitch enough so I have the whole coat basically right that's a problem when you you start so many things that then you know even though i like stitching on this and it was really relaxing because the colors are really natural and muted um i ran out of steam unfortunately all right next so next is this is the bag is it one of the me made bags this is the um is it from Night Spirit, Night Spirit Studios? I think it's from Night Spirit Studios and um, it's called Ornate Pumpkin. Um, it wasn't charted in neon. I stitched it in neon. And this was the first time I stitched on 18 count Ada. So it's it goes way back. This is from 2021. And then I turned it into a project bag. And in it, I have a new start, so this month I started a few projects. So this is called Legend of Lake Geneva. It's from Owl Stitching House. Um, you can find them on Etsy. And I am stitching it on 20 count Ada from Cedar Linen and Design in Tefra using my own sulky conversion and this is where i am so i have a little bit of like the border this ada is fantastic it's so soft so yeah i will it is i will definitely in future when i go you know when i'm um, low on fabric which I don't know when that happens in the next 10 years maybe I have so many, so many fabrics big stash so yeah so this is um, because it's a new start um, at least for the first half of the year it's not going to be the main focus um, I mean if it comes up on the wheel I will stitch it but I, I prefer to work on those that are older okay next is another new start it's 
Cuckoo Bird Sampler from Hands Heart and Hand. And I am stitching this on 20 count Ada in cashmere blue using um, cottage garden thread in what is the golden gully. So is another new start this is um, on I think a pattern called matter in hand if I'm not mistaken uh, from Jeanette Douglas and um, I did a little bit of modification so this is like cross stitch in different languages so I swapped three of those one is in Farsi which says Shomora Duzi and then I added Japanese one um, here in the middle and then to trees which is the arabic for cross stitch um there so and then i turned it into project bag i love turning my old like finishes into project bags because i love to turn my projects into things that i actually can touch and use like everyday use i'm not so precious of course there are a few projects that when i finished i really definitely wanted to only frame because i did not want them to um, be ruined by being touched all the time but with the majority of my finishes i'm not really precious about them i actually like the wear and tear on hand works if that makes sense i know i'm in the minority with that i know it's unpopular opinion but i feel like when they're lived um sort of like worn from love and use they're actually more beautiful um so yeah so i love to touch my work i love to like bend it and stretch it and you know have it on something that i'm actually going to use so uh, finishing them in project bags is like the best thing because it's like still stitcher related and also I can you know continue using it and seeing it and touching it yeah so here I have a project that I was waiting to start this is Quaker Crow from Work Basket if you know me you know I have a huge collection now of work basket patterns because they're awesome and they're out of print now unfortunately um the designers retired both of them so um they're becoming harder and harder to find but i was lucky to be able to accumulate like a, a good uh, number of patterns in a really short time uh, since my obsession has started including my unicorn pattern which is a whip and i'm gonna talk about it soon um so yeah so this was one of the patterns that i really chased after it's it was popular and uh it was really hard to find i had to actually place i think four or five times i placed the order and it was cancelled uh, because uh they thought they had it and then they went looked into inventory and they they realized they don't have it um so the listing was up but they didn't have the inventory Finally, I was able to find it on um, eBay. So yeah, Quaker Crow by Work Basket. And I am stitching it in um, DG Stitchery fabric, uh, 18 count, in autumn, which is like this printed fabric. And I'm using one strand of um, Threadworks in, what's the name? Lava Rocks. One, one, two, one, two. Yeah. All right. Next, this is another me made um, project bag. This was called Victorian Rose. This was one of those printed, pro, uh, you know, stamped um, cross stitch patterns. 
um this was from when i started like air very early on like in late 2020 early 2021 i bought a whole bunch of um this stamped cross stitch first before i started actually doing counter cross stitch uh just to try and see if i like it or not and i at the time i'd have no idea about the theft that was going on i thought that if it's coming from an uh, a company that a lot of people are purchasing from it should be all good and licensed and blah 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 no i have come to realize that no that's not the case so i'm not you know i had few of these left and i just trashed them and just saved the threads but this was one of those that i actually completed so yeah this was a stamped cross stitch so victorian rose and i turned it into project bag and is it houses the Nemori tapestry, which was I started was it a month ago? So it's by Modern Folk Embroidery. This is Lord of the Ring inspired pattern. I am stitching it on ooh, twenty count. Lugana in Sunflower and I'm using Sandro Silk in Metal right. Sandro Silk is actually it's not um, a silk for stitching this is like yarn very very thin yarn that is used for machine um, to make shawls and stuff and it's really really soft it's a little thicker than two strand of DMC just a tiny bit thicker than that it's not like three strand it's like two and a half a strand of DMC so um, on something like this which is a Lugana so it's not that tight um, it works perfectly. It gives the perfect coverage and it's still easy, very easy to work with and to stitch with. So I actually really love it. And I think um, Megan and Megan from Long Distance Distance Stitchers um, start, well, was it both of them or one of them? I don't remember. They started a sal, a one stitch to rule them all, I think is the, the hashtag um, for this. And I'm, I know that there is like a whole thing, there is Zoom related to it, people, you know, have to finish it by a certain time i just liked to start with everyone else but i'm i'm on my own schedule you know whenever i get to it i get to it so yeah next is so, so remember i said like i have my unicorn pattern right so yeah so this is uh the next project it, this is another one of those stamped Cross stitch. This was the first larger, large stamp cross stitch that I did. Like I did a tiny, tiny project first, and then this was the second one, and it's full of mistakes, like full of mistakes. But I don't, I don't care because the, you know, the effect still is pretty, right? So I turned it into a project bag, and it does house my unicorn pattern it is stitch and time by uh, the work basket this sampler you have no idea how hard it is to find it it's very hard to find it doesn't come on the market as often as you would think no one is you know parting way with what they have it actually went out of print way before um designers stopped designing so before they retired this was even then it was hard to find because it was out of print for a while even then and now it's almost impossible to find um i first got really lucky and michelle 
Michelle Gary from Michelle Bendy Stitchy um, loaned me her copy. So I made a working copy. I started working on it. And then I got lucky and I found um, a listing for a stitch in time on eBay. And I bought it so quick. I paid pre pretty penny for it, but it is is worth it. Now I have my own copy. So yeah, it's a stitch in time by work basket has all those little like they're tiny animals all over it's quirky all of their patterns are very quirky and i am because this is a unicorn pattern i thought why go boring so i'm gonna actually share the color palette completely with you um i decided to go rogue as i usually do and I am stitching it on this amazingness of a fabric, which is hand-dyed. It was a gift from these 20 stitches. So D um, um, dyed this themselves and um, gifted it to me. And has all this yellow, green, orange, purple, pink, red colors in it. And I'm based on that i changed all the colors of the so this is how much i i have a little bit of like the border i'm going to show you the threads that i am um, that i've chosen for this so it's a combination of not night uh stalkers calling i have a few silks for you i have a cottage garden thread you know, uh, yes, this for you, thread works. Yep. So it's um, pink, purple, and or pink, purple, uh, orange, and blue, and gray. So yeah, this is the color palette. This is another one of those shop miss a bags next is hoop there it is by heart heart string samplery and this has a story so i am ada stitcher i like the ease of stitching on ada i love how uh, i don't have to think or be cautious about finding the right hole or whatever so it's it's really easy to stitch and i i don't want stitching to become a chore for me however i was i'm part of the round robin and um other people at that round robin group um wanted to stitch on linen and even weave and um this Put me in like a dilemma so i i forced myself to think through why i have this hang up on stitching avoiding a stitching two over two so i went ahead i um tried and i stitched on 36 count and i liked it and actually you know yes i have to pay attention more and be more cautious when i'm actually more aware of my stitching uh, which I think it will become easier over time, but you know, right now as a beginner uh, on like linen, um, it wasn't that difficult uh, to stitch. So then I was like, you know what? Let's up the ante. And I was looking on picture this. Uh, I was looking through pictures this plus uh, fabrics to um, get a few um, to try on. And then I came across this fabric that the, it was only available in two counts, 28 count and 40 count. Yeah, I bought the 40 count. And to just make it even more interesting, it's dark. So 
So this is the fabric I'm stitching that. I uh, hope there it is on. It's Huntress from Picture This Plus. This is 40 count. Look at those tiny stitches. So yes, I do need magnifying glass with this to be able to stitch it, but it still is doable. This is one sitting, by the way. I only wanted to see if I can actually stitch on this. And it turned out that yes, it's doable still. I mean, it will take a little longer, but it's doable. So yeah. So yeah, I stitch on linen now. Majority of my um, projects are um, on um, Ada, but um, I have one whip in uh, linen now, and I am. I will have another one. Uh, because I'm participating in um, a Stitch for Pride 2024 and I have already signed up and I got my fabric and because there is fractional stitching in that I ordered 36 count linen for that so I will be stitching that on linen too so yeah Ooh, let's adjust the light next this is another me made bag this is um, the Voss, Voss from Therese um, by Bendisichi, and um, I finished it as a project bag. And it is, is housing one of my design. I don't have this in color, so I inserted a photo here. It's called Defiant. This is a pattern I designed exclusively to celebrate Dee's birthday or a stitch that. Yep. So, so you can still access it if you're interested in the pattern, but it's not on my Etsy shop. This is exclusive pattern. So I'm going to um, link their uh, Dee's uh, Ko-Fi below. The way you can access this pattern is you can go to their Ko-Fi, you can donate $10 or more to their Ko-Fi account and then email me. My email um, information is down below. You can just email me the receipt of your donation to them and I can email you the pattern, all right? I started this on their birthday for Flip, Flip D the Bird Sal. This is, I think, the second year they're doing this. Um, I'm stitching it on 22 count via Stitch Me in Lunar. I'm using one strand of, I, I know this is my own design, but even on my own design, I go rogue. So I charted this in DMC, but when I came to stitching, I just kitted up silks. So, yep. So I started on the border. So I have just a tiny bit of stitching on one sitting that I did on their birthday. Um, so I need to go back to it for sure. Next, this is another me made bag. Uh, one of the first counted cross stitch project bags that I made. This was when I had my late um, cat, Meshki, who passed away from cancer in 2021. Gosh, it's been a long time now. And um, he used to sit on me when I stitched. And so he, and like play with the thread that I was stitching, he would just fight me with that. So there, a lot of his hair actually is embedded in, in um, my stitching. So if you look at this yellow cat, for example, has this like bits of, you know, black in it. He was black too, you know, I, yeah, I have a thing with black cats. Um, and yeah, so this is all his hair. Like all stuck in, it's actually st gone through it. I stitched it in um, the fabric. So at the time it was annoying, but now it makes me even like this bag even more because 
it's mesh keys in here living in this bag so yeah and in this bag i have um one dozen quaker this is for um a style started by ej from Sun sunshine stitchers um and it's bake me a quaker style and uh she divided this pattern into 12 sections but the style goes for 13 months so you have like an extra month to catch up basically the way i'm gonna stitch is i'm not i'm not gonna just she actually just sliced it so it's not full of motifs i'm gonna stitch it like motif by motif and not really care about you know the limit of the page or whatever so that's that and i am you know you see a theme right i never pay attention to what's called for so i do my thing almost almost always I have like just a few projects that are called for so this is 16 count it's more like a 17 count really because it was hand dyed it's hand dyed by miss late pages this is called red tail just look at the amazingness that is this fabric right right and i am stitching with another sandro silk in uh, moss and i love this effect the green some of these splashes actually matches exactly the color of the thread so when they overlap it sort of like melts in the background and i love that effect so yeah this is how much i stitch this is just one sitting yeah Next is another me made bag. This is a Stitcher's RSVP. I don't remember the designer. But if you look for a Stitcher's RSVP, you find it. So I changed the color of the cat to black to match my cat. And this is the project bag that I made out of it. And it houses um, Byron uh, the Blackbird, Byron Blackbird, um, by um, the Artsy Housewife. So this is part of a style that um, me, um, Nitya, Sarah, and Julie started. And the challenge was to uh, pick a pattern from RC Housewife because we all found out that we love her designs and we sort of were obsessed. So we all chose our own, you know, it's not one pattern, everyone chose their own. And um, I chose this guy because of course, just look at that bird. It's magnificent and it's huge, <laughs> but it's actually a lot of just filling and it's really quick stitch compared to a lot of other projects that I work on. Anywho, um, so the hashtag that Nitya came up with was Artsy Farsi Sal. So if you want to join us, um, just pick <laughs> pick a pattern from Artsy Housewife and you can join us anytime. And uh, the challenge was to choose everything from a stash. So nothing bought for it. Every, except for the pattern of course but everything else is from stash i'm stitching it on 18 count ada in from xju design in grandpa's sleeve and i have like a, like a whole bunch of like mystery leftover threads that i'm using and that's the stash that i picked these threads from right So many awesome projects, so little time. That's the problem. I just need to, 
I don't know, quit my job and just a stitch. I wish if they, you know, paid me to a stitch. But no, I have to go to work. Anywho. Next is, this is another one of those wet bags. It is housing my uh, 2023 New Year new project. Um, and it's come to the garden by the trees of Colgate. And um, look at this color palette. Now I'm going to show you what I'm stitching it on. And this was um, restarted once. Uh, because the fabric that I chose, I mean, it's still the same theme continued. But um, the fabric I chose was not soft at all. So I, I changed it. So now I'm stitching on, uh, let's see, 18 count picture this plus in Mystic, and I have my own sulky conversion. This is the first page done. Right? I love this fabric and this color palette. I'm so happy with it. So here we are. This will be my um, focus during the New Year day and night. New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I'm going to definitely stitch on this. I'm not going to start a new project for New Year this year. I'm going to focus on uh, what I started last year. Um, there's another me made bag this is a Tatris uh, it was a free from Jordan Nasser which is a Palestinian um, artist really he creates this if you google him you find that he creates this big big Tatris projects like tapestry size huge and it's like landscapes and it's just fantastic just go look at his work and you know so he taught a class and provided this as like an introduction to the trees as like a, this is this was a free pattern that he provided and it was free for download so i downloaded it and i stitched it using some random threads and found this great matching fabrics and here we are and in it i have there's a ghost goth from hemlock and rye so i was um i originally bought the original release of there's a and um i was planning on stitching the right version and then i saw julie stitching this goth version and i was like wait a minute that's what i want so i've been waiting patiently for her to finish her model and release her um goth version basically this is, by the way, it's not just the same exact like color by color like match. This is a complete new palette um, that she came up with um, for this version. But of course you can do your own thing. And I am stitching it on, let's see. What am I stitching it on? 18 count Ilvosa in Cauldron. By um, hand dye by Jen. And I'm using call for DMC because of course I'm using call for DMC. This is one of those few projects that I'm using call for DMC because the call for is amazing. I'm gonna show you the call for. So this is the fabric. This is green and like it's spooky, like green and purple. And it's uh, 
And this is a quick stitch, actually. Let me show you the palette, the color palette, because you need to see this to realize why I waited patiently to get my hands on this, right? <laughs> this is amazing. There are these like pops of neon, right? And then there are these like a spooky purple and these rusty colors. This is just amazing palette, like amazing palette. Yeah. So great, great job, Julie. Like great job. Seriously talented. Have a huge pile down here now. Next is another one of those like dollar bags. And this one is on Picture This Plus. It's um, called, let me first show you what it is actually. This is Stitching Makes Me Happy by Needle Blink Designs. It's just a small. And I'm using Picture This Plus 18 count in earthen. And I'm just using leftover threads. Just barely started it. This is just one sitting of, like it's, I just started it and then, yeah, went into a pile. Next is another one of these wet bags, has kitty on it. So earlier this year, me and Nitya, we had um, a road trip to Black Cat Tree. I did some serious damage that day. <laughs> and this was one of the patterns that was like 100% I blame it on Nitya. Because I was done shopping. And then, and then what she does, she calls me over and says, have you seen this? Because I was talking about this pattern like forever. So she's like, have you seen this? I'm like, yes, I did. But I tried to avoid and forget that I saw it. So of course I picked it up and then I had to find silk for it because of course you do. Because you're standing there and they were like, they had all the silks, all of them. So, so yeah, so it happened. But of course, I'm not doing call for it. I'm doing my own thing. I'm stitching up on 22 count um, Ada that I hand dyed. And it looks like this stormy sea. And I started this like tiny little bit, one over one. Let me show you the threads. I am using two silken color. One is in Gold Coast and the other one is Egyptian Nights. Let me show you. Yep. So this is Egyptian Nights. And this is Gold Coast. So this is the main color and this is the accent. Yep. I'm telling you, I do one thing. All right, next. Next is another project that I almost, I'm almost doing the call for, almost. First, let's talk about the back. This is from um, 
Crap Shack is Citri on Etsy. Isn't it amazing? The colors, fantastic. In it, I have my first and only um, fancy lady. La Capati in, um, like from Bella Filipina. She's gorgeous, right? And I'm stitching it on 18 count opal. Uh, this is Mystic Fabrics in a night nice sky unifer. And I'm using called for threads, except I don't like beading. I hate beading actually, let's put it that way. Because it creates like this texture and then it's all like, it's a lot of work for a little reward. So I just see my idea, in, in my opinion. Instead, I swapped all of those call fours with um, uh, Petit Treasure Bricks. So it still sparkles, but it's in a different way. So this is where I am. So I have finished all the top three pages. So her face and all, all of that is done. I wish if you could see how, it's, well, sort of you can sort of see how sparkly it is but it is super sparkly and i have finished so these are three pages done this is four page done i'm on page five which is the heaviest i think stitchy wise the heaviest one of them all in the middle yeah so this is one of those projects that are going to be my focus this year because I started it in 2022 so definitely you want to focus on it and finish it next is another one of those that I started in 2022 so this is the back another craft shack stitchery bag in it I have Tom's Foolery from Hands Across the Sea. Isn't this amazing? So this is a reproduction, right? Just look at this. It looks like a child's painting. So many odd little things. Like there is no empty spot anywhere. It just filled it in all oh, like so many tiny tiny motifs and it's super colorful so it does have Adam and Eve I'm gonna change it somehow we'll see when we get there how I change it but it's not gonna be Adam and Eve uh, it's not gonna be Adam and Eve so yeah and I am stitching it on 20 count cashmere blue in my own sulky conversion. And I have finished two pages. So yeah, so this is another one of those that I definitely want to focus on and finish this year. Next, this is another one of those me made bags. And it is housing a heart sampler by Big Bad Wipes on Etsy. This is an amazing sampler. Just amazing. And I am doing my own thing. I'm stitching it in on 20 count fiber on a whim in new to Sedona. And I am using sulky conversion, but this is more of like P 
pinkish red. This is more like orangey, browny um, red. So, yeah. <clears throat> this is another project that I have, I feel like I have not touched much this year so i will definitely want to go back to it another one of those flip back um and in it i do have this i blame on ej from sunshine and stitchers i followed her progress and eventually finish of this pattern and I was like this is the most amazing thing that I have seen it's equivalent to any of the you know fancy ladies it is in a way a fancy lady um, and then I found out that it is printed in one of those like old books from Joan Elliott's so I purchased the book and uh, surprise surprise not only is Mother Moon there which is, yeah, by the way, that's the pattern, Mother Moon. So not only Mother Moon is uh, in that book, but also uh, Father Son is in it. So goal is to finish this so I can then stitch some time in the future um, Father Son as well. And I am using Call for Thread and again i am not beading instead i switched it with petite treasure braid and i have the most pathetic start on this and i'm stitching on um is it mystic fabrics yes mystic fabrics in Visteria. this is my start I stitched only one day on this, and that was it. All right, we are here at the end. This is the most, this is the last one. Another Craft Shack stitchery. Just look at the kitties on this. Only if this was in black, like black cats, then it would be perfect. But it's still, still is cute. Just look at that face. Yeah. And it house. This is my only. I mean, Mother Moon is sort of like full coverage. It's almost full coverage. Um. This is another one that is like full coverage. And it's Flavor of Autumn by Mary Weaver. So originally I bought this as one of those stamped cross stitch you know, kits. And then after I realized that these are probably slow, uh, stolen, I felt really bad because I love that pattern and I could not find, find it in any store. Um, and I didn't know what the original actually name of the pattern was. So I put it in the universe and finally someone helped me out to figure out what, who is the designer. And um, I found a seller on Etsy who was selling, um, you know, I asked her directly and she said that she, she is licensed to sell the patterns. So I bought the pattern from her again, but I kept the threads that came with the kit. Um, and I checked only a couple of them were different. And even though those were different, there still were dupes. So they were close enough that I, you know, it didn't make sense for me to change it. So I'm um, essentially stitching it out of the pattern that I bought, um, like legally. And it's a legal copy of it. But I'm using threads that I bought with the, the other, um, you know, the other kit, the stamped kit. So I'm using the threads for that. And I am stitching this um, on 20 count Ada intense stitch using two strand of um, the thread, which I think is the MC, but who knows. 
So yeah, I. So yeah, I have the first two pages done. So even though it, this is like um, 10 stitch, if you look at it like from further on, it actually it looks great. If you go close, then you start like seeing that this is actually 10 stitch. It's not full stitch, but it doesn't matter. Who, who gets that close to your work? It's gonna be framed on my kitchen wall anyway, so. Yeah, and I do have another, I, I when I purchased this from the seller that I found, I found the companion to this, um, because these are like a, a series. Um, so this one is assortment of um, pickles, um, flavor of autumn, because that's the time you pickle. And then there is another one that is, um, I think it's Taste of Summer. That's the one that I bought. The companion to this that one is assortment of jams and then there is the one that has coffee and there are all sorts of like coffee and coffee perfuming all, all the like things that you use to make coffee and different coffee beans and cups and all that and then the fourth one is spirits so there are tons of like different liqueurs and stuff which is not for me anyway so the two that i was interested in was the assortment of jam and the pickle so i have the pickle and i'm waiting for this is another one that is like a queued up kind of, kind of situation so i need to finish this so then i can start stitching the assortment of jams so sometime in future who knows when i turn 60 maybe <laughs> i'll have both of them like hang in my kitchen so we'll see. So that is, that is it. Believe it or not, we are at the end of this and my crate of things is finally empty. Oh boy. When I started the stitching, when I got this, this thing, I said, well, this is the extent of my this is this will be my limit so if it's full whoop, put it down if it's full that means that i should not start anything else <laughs> what a joke so now it's overflowing but i'm still starting things so i'm going to remedy that next year i'm going to focus on stitching some of the old whips and getting them done um so then i can start like adding more to the pile of course so yeah so i hope you enjoyed the ride and it was a long one <laughs> and i talked a lot but i'm not done yet after i finish this i'm gonna actually record my regular floss soup so stay tuned for that one all right meanwhile i hope that as much or as little as you can stitch is enjoyable and also um, don't forget, I know we are all happy and thinking about our plans and what we have done, blah, 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 all of that, uh, talking about good stitchy talks, but also keep in mind that we need to be aware of what's going on in the world and be responsible and use our voice because we do have one and we live in a free country, free-ish country that allows us to use that voice, so use it for good and when you see injustice pointed out and i'm specifically talking about um palestine so i have been talking about palestine non-stop for ever since the whole um atrocities in gaza started and i still will continue talking about that so not to be a damper of the mood at this point but it's important to keep that in mind as well. So do the good work and um, use your voice. All right. Take care of yourself. Bye.